Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here again. Now we have to start working on the also router one after he has internet. What we need to do, we have to make it as a DHCP server. Why we need to do that? So I'm going to show you that in a moment. So as you can see, we have a lab of four points. Let's go to the lab scenario to explain to you why we need to make router one as a DHCP server. So router one is able to go to the internet. That's something Let's put it like this. That's checked. Okay, so this is the first step. Now, what I need is that also router 2, I want him to go to the internet. So we want to share the internet that we have on router 1, that also router 2, which is an end device. It can be a PC or whatever. All right. But also we want him to go to the internet. Now, to do that, we have to do the router 1 to act as a DHCP server. Why? Because instead that every time if we have uh, many LAN devices that we put ourselves manually the IP address, the subnet mask, the gateway, the DNS on each of the computer, then what we can do, we can just make DHCP server over here. So router 1 becomes a DHCP server and he can distribute those information. So that means that on this router, this interface, it would ask is there any DHCP server there? He will say, yes, I'm here. And this is, I give you those information. So what I need to do in this lab is to configure router one to act as a DHCP server. To be a DHCP server, we have first to put an IP address on its interface, which is connected to the LAN. I'm going to use this range, 192.168.12. And here I put dot one. So I put an IP because this is going to be the gateway for router two. Router two, when he want to go to the internet, he has to go from this IP. This is the gateway. This is the way he can go to the internet. And then after that, I have to start configuring the DHCP server. I'll make a range to say that I'm going to create a pool of IP addresses that start from 192.168.12.2 until 192.168.12.254. That means anyone asking for an IP, it will give an IP from this range. And the subnet mask is going to be slash 24. So that's uh, the 255.255.255.0. The gateway is going to be 12.1, which is his IP, which is this one. And DNS, we can put something like Google DNS 8.8.8.8 or 8.8.4.4. All right, so that's the plan of uh, this lab. Let's go back now to the points and start doing them. Port number one, put an IP address of uh, 192.168.12.1/24 on router one interface faster than zero over zero. So I put the picture here. So this is very important that first you need to put an IP address on the interface connecting to the LAN because this is going to be your gateway for the LAN devices. So we go to the interface faster than zero over zero. Put an IP address 192.168.12.1. Two five five two five five two five five dot zero, and we should not forget to make it up. So we say no shutdown. So this IP is gonna be the gateway, and if you don't have an IP on the interface, then the DHCP will not work. The DHCP server. So that's what you need to do. The first step. Point number one is done. Point number two. Now we need to configure the DHCP server, and this DHCP server has to provide the IP, the subnet mask gateway, and the DNS. All right. So we go to router one. To configure the DHCP server is straightforward. We have to create a pool. So here you have to write IP DHCP and then question mark. And now we are going to use this one, the pool. So I'm going to use a pool where I have to put all those information. So IP DHCP server pool. And we'll give it a name. Let's give something like LAN. All right. Just to make it easy. Now, if I make question mark, you can see what you can configure in this pool. So what is important for me in uh, this pool is uh, that I want uh, to create, let's have a look, uh, where is it? The network. So this is the network from where the pool is going to give the IP addresses. So this is uh, one. I have to configure the DNS. And we have to configure also, let's see, where is it? Yeah, here, the default route. So this is the router. Uh, that, that means the gateway that is going to give for this uh, DHCP client. So let's start. Let me clear here so we can see that here. Then now we have to say network question mark. So what is the network? In my case, 192.168.12.0 question mark. And here we can say 255.255.255.0. Or you can use, you can see here slash and end. That means slash 24. All right. That means it will provide IP addresses from this range from 192.168.1.0. 2 until 254. Very good. Now, the default router, 
we have to say here. So this is the gateway which is going to provide, which is 192.168.12.1. It's IP address on the fast and zero over zero that we have set it. And finally, the DNS server, I will say a.a.a.8, .a 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 .8, and let's also say a.a.4.4. .4. So it will provide two DNS. And that's it. Now, if you want to make more, you can just also make question mark. You can see you can put, for example, the uh, domain name. You can uh, you can do a lot of other configuration that uh, you want. But that's more than enough what I need. All right. Point number two is done. Point number three: configure router two to act as a DHCP client and check if it has received the information from router one. Very good. So let's go to router two now. We we'll go to the interface, which is fast Ethernet. 0 over 0. And uh, let's have a look now. We need to enable the DHCP client here. So I have to say IP address DHCP. But before I do that, I will have to bring the interface up. And now I say IP address DHCP. Enter. So we have to wait a little bit to see if it's going to receive all those information that I have configured on the DHCP server. And here we go. You can see directly now it's saying that it has received an IP 192.168.12. So this is what I, uh, I have configured dot two. And this is the subnet mask. So IP has been received. If you want, we can say do show IP interface brief. We can see that this has received an IP. Very good. Let's check uh, also the gateway. So do show IP route. You can see it has received this static uh, route. So it's saying to go to anywhere, go from 192.168.12.1. Very good. And if we say do show IP DNS, and we have to say at the end the view. So also the domain name, they have been received over here. Excellent. So now if uh, I go to the router 2 and I ping to 192.168.12.1, his gateway, now we should be able to have a reply. Very good, but can I go to the internet? Let's have a look. Ping a.a.a.8. .a 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 .8. You see, not yet. Why not yet? Because if I go back to the uh, explanation here, so router2 has received all those information, but then when he is sending to go to google.com, it comes to router1. They say, I'm coming from 192 and say dot one two dot two. That's his IP, dot two. Then router1, he cannot send it because it's a private IP. We know that private IP don't go to the internet. So yeah, we need to do something on router one. And that's what we are going to do in the upcoming lab is to create the network address translation. And I'm going to use the port address translation just to translate this. Then in this case, it can go to the internet. Then it will come back. The ping will be translated again to the private IP and then can reach to here. So this is something we are going to do in the upcoming lab. So it has received uh, the IP address. That's correct. And we have configured the DHCP server on router one and the DHCP client on router two. It has received the IP address and the subnet mask, the gateway and DNS. And it's not able to go to the internet. Why not? Because we still need to configure the port address translation. So this is what I wanted to show you in uh, this uh, lecture. In the next uh, lecture, I'm going to do the last step is to configure the port address translation and then we will see if router 2 would go to the internet. So see you in the upcoming lecture.